Um, yeah, so uh, thanks all. I'll introduce myself quickly. My name is Jeroen Domburg. Um, if you don't have the required throat disease in order to pronounce that, um, <laughs> you can call me Sprite TM or just Sprite. Um, if you can't remember that, hey, you guy is also fine. So I'm not uh, thing. I work for Expressive. We have an office here in Singapore. I worked for them for like eight years or so. So if you have any Expressive related stuff, you can also poke me. Um, my website is spritesmods.com. I document all my crap there. Um, most of my crap. Um, so uh, this is, uh, this is how did I name this thing? Uh, something, something miniature track tracks. So for that, you probably first need to know what a Vectrex is. So a Vectrex is a game console that, um, uh, that, that came out in the 80s, 82, I believe. Um, and just to show you, this is what game consoles kind of sort of look like in around that time. Like they were in color, but they were very, 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 very blocky. Um, so just to indicate what, what, what the Vectrex is, here's a, a, an advertisement. Okay. Sorry, I hope this wasn't an ad free space, by the way. <laughs> um, obviously, we want to know what's in there. Well, um, unfortunately, I left my Vectrex uh, at home in the Netherlands on the other side of the planet. So I couldn't bring it here, sorry. Uh, but the internet has, has pictures of it. So this is the back. Um, and uh, the source manual is also available, which is really great because you can see exactly what's in there. And the nice thing is these are all off the shelf. Well, these were off the shelf components. There is no specialized um, logic in there. Vectrex didn't have their own chips made or something. Um, it, like you can, you can uh, even now buy a replacement PCB, uh, go on AliExpress or whatever, buy all the components and just make your own if you want to. Um, so just to indicate what's in there. Um, so the Vectrex runs off cartridges. It doesn't have to, it has one built-in game. Um, but for all the other games, you just plug in a cartridge. Uh, it has a 6809 CPU, which is one of the later 8-bit uh, CPUs made by Motorola. Uh, it runs at, uh, what does it say, 6 megahertz, but I think it's divided down to 1.5 megahertz, which is still pretty fast for that time. Um, it has a ROM, uh, a whopping 8 kilobytes, uh, that includes both the operating system, which is just a, a bunch of library routines, as well as the built-in Minesweeper game. It has RAM, an entire kilobyte of it. Um, it has a PIO, which is a chip that effectively provides GPIO and a bunch of timers and shifters, or a bunch, one, I think, uh, which is like, if you nowadays have a microcontroller, your GPIO would be this chip instead. And it has an audio chip. Um, this is, uh, uh, back in the day, was a very common chip. Makes, uh, has, has three channels for your bleeps and bloops. And it has your graphics accelerator right here. Uh, the MC1408, uh, which is, uh, wait, that's not a graphics accelerator. That's a digital to analog converter. <laughs> and and what's that stuff behind it? That looks like deeper analog magic. That's actually a bunch of integrators and, and sample and hold circuits, etc. What's that good for? Well, um, turns out it leads via a bunch of amplifiers straight to the uh, deflection coils of the CRT that's in there. So, huh? <laughs> Okay, so back in the day when you had your old CRT televisions, um, they worked by uh, scanning a fixed pattern. So that's called a raster scan. So your electron beam goes from left to right and top to bottom and over and over again and just draws the pixels out. This one doesn't uh, because of the DAC and all the other logic, it, it can just send the electron beam wherever it wants. And by turning the electron beam uh, like on or off, it can actually draw like vector graphics. And that's the reason why it's called the Vectrex. Okay, so that's all great and well, but how are we gonna make the Vectrex smaller? Well, uh, you know, the, the trivial way is you take a Raspberry Pi, you slap a display on it, you uh, figure some sort of joystick way, you do something with a 3D printer and Bob's your uncle. 
So, you know, but like that's 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 not the way we're gonna do that because that that solution has like multiple issues, but one very big one, and that is that if you zoom in on an LCD, this is what you see: pixels. Ugh. We don't want pixels. I don't think that a vectrex can be a proper vectrex <laughs> if it if it shows pixels. I don't want that. Okay. So, um, how are we going to do that the proper way? Well, uh, this is the this is again a schematic of the vectrex, and uh, what we have is we have the display, which must be a CRT, which is determined. Uh, we have the digital logic, so the CPU, the ROM, the RAM, etc. We have the power supply, which also includes like uh, stuff like the deflection amplifier, um, and and finally we have the case. So let's start with the CRT. So um, like CRTs can be very big, but they can also be pretty small. And and uh, like these are these are um, uh, intercoms for uh, apartments. And like by now these are all very old, and you can get them and the screens that they have for like very cheap. And the screens are actual CRTs, but they have a, a bit of a weird um, uh, thing because they need to be flat against the wall. They move the uh, electron gun and the coils uh, uh, to to under the, the screen rather than behind it. And uh, the nice thing is, well, um, you kind of see the resemblance, don't you? This, this is kind of made to be made into a game console. So, okay, so screen is set. Uh, bought a screen for 15 quid or something. It costs like next to nothing. Um, so up to the next thing. Well, the logic. Um, as I said, you can make a vector X using discrete logic, but I want this thing to be small. So I just took an FPGA. Uh, it's, 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 a lot, it's a lot simpler on the... Uh, trying to get all the hardware side. It's a little bit more complicated on the actual, um, uh, you know, putting stuff inside. So uh, I need a shopping list for shit to put in the um, uh, the FPGA. Uh, we've got the CPU, we, we've got the VIA or the PIO or whatever it's called. We have the sound chip and we have a simulation of the analog stuff. So the nice thing about FPGA stuff is, is you know, all those chips, you can just download them. <laughs> They're just on the internet, open source free, you can grab it. So uh, 6509, there's a Mr. Project which tries to put a whole bunch of arcade machines and other stuff into an FPGA, uh, all open source. So I stole the CPU from there. Um, the VIC-20 has the same uh, PIO chip and there, 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 there was some sort of simulation for that. So I stole the, 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 the PIO from there. And finally, the Sinclair uh, ZX Spectrum plus 128K um, had the same audio chip, or actually a, a slightly newer variant that was backwards compatible. So again, I stole it. Um, the only thing that remained was the analog si uh, simulations, but like that entire schematic that boils, boils down to this. It's, it's, it's actually pretty <laughs> trivial. <laughs> okay, so all those chips need to be dumped into the FPGA. And uh, the FPGA specifically is uh, on this little board, um, uh, this is a color light I9, I believe. So it has an FPGA, uh, ECP5, um, uh, made by Lattice, which is great because Yosis, the open source tool chain, supports it very well. Um, it has eight megabytes of SD RAM. It has two megabytes of flash uh, that contains the bitstream as well as anything else you want to dump in there. And it contains two gigabit files, which we won't use. Um, and uh, so the thing is not that expensive. I think it's about thirty bucks. And you know, if you don't, if you if you can't use it, you can also <laughs> use it for other things. I don't know. Um, okay, so uh, the hardware is done. Now we still need the power supply as well as the horizontal and vertical deflection. So uh, for that, uh, I first need to explain a little bit about the CRT because I can imagine that even for the people who were around during that time, controlling CRTs might not be common knowledge. Okay, so th this is the CRT. I removed the backboard and the frame. And the way a CRT works is uh, you put a bunch of volts in here. You put way more volts in here. <laughs> and then you get a little dot on the screen. And uh, obviously now you want to draw something and you do that using the, the, the flexion coils. Uh, you just put a bunch of amps in there. And, and if you do that correctly, you get an image. Easy, right? So. Um, ju yeah. just to illustrate a little bit more on the vault. So this is a this is a, a, a cut through. Um, a CRT has a bunch of components, most of, of which are just bits of metal. So the first of it is a is a heater. Uh, an electron gun needs a source of electrons, and a heated bit of metal works very well for that. That that needs ten volts. That's a bit high. I mean, we're used to three point three volts, but you know. 
Um, then you need a voltage in order to set the intensity, which is called G1. Uh, that's between 70 volt and 40 volt, which is that's even a little bit more high, but you know, let's let's move on. Then you've got 120 volt for your screen. That's about half what comes out of your main voltage, so it's getting there. Then you need a focus voltage of 340 volt volts. That's that's you know, but you know, there's only one voltage left, so how bad can it be? Oh yeah, that's five kilovolt. Um, <laughs> Hmm? I'll get to that. <laughs> so uh, the nice thing is these voltages are all very, very complicated to generate, but the original PCB happens to have a so-called flyback transformer that can generate those, those voltages. That's effectively just a transformer with a bunch of taps. Uh, one of it is the five kilovolt taps, uh, which, which ends up here which is like attached to it via a nice sturdy silicone cable. So there's no chance you ever touch that. I actually managed to not touch it. I was very happy with that. Um, you know, and how do you control that? Well, it's easy, right? Um, I mean, it's it's not like it's deeper magic and I have no clue what's going on here. So it took me a while, but I, I simplified it a bunch and uh, it, com it comes down to this. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details, but like there's a there's a MOSFET there that generates the, the AC that you need in order to make a transformer work. And there's a bunch of single single size rectifiers that make a bunch of voltages. Um, those voltages, uh, G2 and G3 are fixed voltages. So I just use a resistive the divider in order to generate that. that that's pretty easy. G1 is the intensity. So you, the FPJ needs to be able to set that. Um, this took me a bit of tweaking, and this is still a bit of analog magic that has gremlins in it that I, I haven't really figured out yet, but um, it comes down to there's a there's an R2R DAC here that converts a parallel output from the FPGA into an analog signal, and there's a bunch of magic there to convert it up to the 40 to 70 volt that's needed. So, uh, and that is what you get when you do that, the, the aforementioned single pixel. Now we still need to move that around, and we do that using uh, the deflection coils. And um, deflection coils are, are effectively you dump a, a, a certain amount of amps through with a certain cur current, and that sets the deflection. So if you can can vary that, then uh, that's great. And uh, the Vectrex itself uses a, a pretty simple way. It effectively uses a power amplifier that is uh, connected in a way where it converts a voltage to a current using a shunt resistor. And it uses that in order to just put a fixed current through there, uh, which is set by the rest of the, uh, the, the, the hardware, the DAC and everything behind it. So the issue is that this works like a 7805. I'm not sure if you guys know the uh, you guys know the 7805. Um, it's a it's a linear regulator. You feed it a certain voltage and it outputs five volts. And it does that by burning up the voltage between the input and the output voltage. So that's heat. So that's the reason why you usually see them in this configuration. It has a heat sink because it needs to get rid of that heat. So the vectrex works in a kind of sort of similar way, and you can see the big ass heat sink here. So I don't have space for that in a portable Vectrex. Um, I also don't have like a, a, a portable Vectrex that gets too hot to hold in your hands is not a very good portable Vectrex. Mm -hmm. And second of all, uh, and third of all, I'd like my Vectrex batteries to last more than three milliseconds. <laughs> so um, I cut off a whole bunch of, of deeper digital magic um, sufficient to say that, why is this? because I hit the wrong key. Uh, sufficient to say, uh, there's also something called a switch mode power supply. And something like this is smaller than a 7805. And uh, this can handle like three times the current a 7805 can, because it uses some smart um, properties of an inductor. Well, we have inductors. The deflection coils are inductors. So all I need to add is the smartness and figure that out. and spent like half a year of my life and anyway uh very simple and the end result is this this is my entire deflection subsystem uh these are one and a half kilohertz uh half bridge drivers uh these are controlled by the fpga in deeper magic again and uh you can see how tiny that they are and they don't get warm like it, it, it really works very well um Okay, on to the rest of the hardware. I already showed you a bit of the PCB. Uh, this is the full PCB. 
Um, so the bits in here are, I need a power supply. These are a bunch of uh, buck and boost converters for the 10 volts, uh, for the filament, five volts for other voltages. Uh, this is the bit around the flyback, uh, a few few knobs in order to tweak your 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 intensity, etc. Uh, up top is the R2R deck. You can see all the resistors, and uh, at the bottom is the the op amp that that takes care of the intensity. Uh, this is the deflection amp. It's as I said, really small. I I like that. Uh, there's also an audio amplifier there, uh, speaker, you need the beeps and boops. And there's a few connectors for the controls. There's an analog joystick and there's four buttons in there. Um, this is the second PCB. This contains the, uh, the FPGA. Um, and it also contains some other stuff on the other side. Um, this is a connector for an actual Vectrex cartridge, because obviously you need to be able to put those in. Um, but I only have two of them, and they're kind of sort of rare and absolutely not obtainable in these regions. So I also have a micro SD card, so you can just dump your ROMs on there. You know. um, so uh, finally, connectors to the other PCB. So this is how it uh, looks assembled. Uh, you can see that the uh, the main PCB is a replacement for the PCB that was, was in the module. Uh, fits in exactly the same place. Uh, at the bottom, you have the uh, um, uh, the daughterboard PCB, and, and you can see that the Vectrex cartridge slots in there like a Game Boy cartridge used to. Uh, I I need a case. There's five kilovolts in there. I really need a case. <laughs> um, so whipped one up in Open SCAD. Uh, these are the insides. Uh, it's got like all your nubbins. Uh, I needed some other stuff, so I was too lazy to to model a, a, a battery case in, in Open SCAD. So just bought that. Same with the buttons. So this is uh, this is the bottom side, um, and this is with the PCB uh, with the main PCB and the CRT on top. Uh, connectors to the speaker and the buttons, and finally this is it assembled. I have two of them, and um, yeah, that's it. A little bit more about the FPGA load because I I told you that there's a Vectrex in there. That that's correct. Uh, the Vectrex is here. Uh, it includes the ROM, so you can play Mine Mine uh, Minesweeper. Uh, it's connected to via an ADC to the joystick. The joystick is analog plus the buttons. Uh, it has a PWM generator, so I can connect the speaker to it. And it drives a CRT, but it has to do that via distortion correction because those CRTs, because they have the electron gun in the bottom, they, the, the, the native image looks like this. So it needs to correct for that. And it does, also has a coil mole correction because of the deeper coil magic that I talked about. <laughs> Um, if you want to connect this to an external cartridge, it's easy. You just connect it and the level converters do their work and that's it. But as I said, I only have two, so I also want to play other games. So uh, there's a there's a switch in the FPGA logic so I can uh, run the FPGA off a, a block of SD RAM instead. Obviously, that, they, that game doesn't appear in that SD RAM by magic, so I need a little bit more and um, that's this. Um, I uh, so the games are all on an SD card, so there, there's an SD card interface in there um, that is connected to a Risk Five CPU. That is, um, uh, I can just dump C in there, so I can just dump existing SD card libraries as well as existing FATFS libraries in there to read my files. And there's also a little debug connector with a UART, and you use that initially in order to set all the parameters for the CRT and, and stuff like that because they tend to differ from CRT to CRT. Okay, for the firmware, uh, this is not my first Vectrex thing. I made a multi-card before, um, and someone else took the firmware from that multi-card because it was open source, and they made their own uh, commercial multi-card with it, uh, improving the software by a lot. But because that was also open source, I could just steal it back, <laughs> and, and now I have a really, really great uh, uh, multi-card menu without you know having to put in too much effort. Uh, oh, with final image, this is what the debug console looks like. It's just a, you know, you press a key, you do a function. Okay. Uh, finally, there's a little demo. I will show it. Yeah. I think it's better to just roll the video. I have the things with me, but first of all, demo effect. It'll, it'll likely break if I demo it. <laughs> um, and second of all, I think it's for the Zoom people easier to see rather than webcam. So I'll just I'll just run it and I'll pass along the, the rest later. So this is this is Mindstorm. This is the built-in game. Um, you can actually see that there's something that ah go away. There's there uh, uh, you sometimes see something that looks like pixels, especially in very long lines. 
that's the analog gremlins that I talked about. There's some sort of oscillation in the intensity. So rather than a line, you get a dotted line. Um, anyway, my sweeper is a real great game. I, I love that they put that in because, yeah. So turn it off. Uh, and um, this is this is an actual cartridge. This is a 1982 copyright cartridge. And that just works. Um, it's an older rise voltage as well. So this is Starship that I think in the USA it was Star Trek, but they didn't get the license or something. And this is actually like more or less fully 3D, which was very, very hard for the other consoles around that time because you know, for them to draw vectors, you know, you got you got to calculate and, and draw each pixel individually. Well, here you just go, you just go, okay, go from here to here and, and draw, knock yourself out. So I'll forward a little bit. Oh, ah, I hope to forward a little bit. Uh, can I show the controls? We can show the controls. And I will just forward to, I will just, my not what uses that. Oh yeah, I'm not used to using mice with. Uh, eh. Oh yeah, the multi cards. I'll show the multi cards a little bit. I ah, <laughs> might have been faster to just let it run. Okay, so this is the multi card. It shows all the files on the um, on the SD card. You can pick one and and go. This is Berserk, which is a game that was ported to like every single console out there around that time. I think. Um, I don't quite get it. I've never really liked that game, but it's in there. And finally, people will even write stuff um, around this time. So this is this is a demo that kind of sort of shows off the, the, the Vectrex, has nice music as well. And obviously it also runs on my Vectrex. If you guys keep keep looking at this, I'm I'm gonna unpack my actual one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. Um, uh, I think this one, like I met with a deflection cord at some point, and the deflection cord don't come to the CRT, like uh, with the glasses of the CRT physically. It might be that it's a stick for the digital director to the right. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, to be fair, these certain CRTs were intended for like home interphones, so they never were really good to be close to the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, really? 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 Oh, but uh, as I said, even with that, uh, there's, there's a bunch of keys on Like if you were to project a square without correcting, it would look like this because the, the, um, uh, the electrons are not here and the electrons go like that. So yeah, it, it's weird that they managed to make it work. And I did as well. And I thought it was like the typical one from Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay, I'll finish up the presentation and then and then I'll and then I'll um, uh, pass them around. Okay, so this is the end. The entire thing is supposed to be open source when I get around to actually finally documenting. <laughs> I have I have a queue. Sorry. <laughs> I did. Uh, people, people. Uh, I put them in my hand luggage and and people were were. Like, what the hell is this? And then I was like, oh, I get to show it off and take, turn it on. Look, this is great. And there's actually one or two people who were like, oh, this is this is really cool. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I need to fix that intensity circuit. I don't think I'll ever get around to it, but in theory, make more games work. 99% of the games work. There's a few modern games that use um, bank switching shenanigans uh, that I haven't properly implemented yet because I took a few shortcuts where yeah. Um, 
Oh, finally, there's also arcade machines that use vector monitors. In theory, I could dump the bitstream for that in the FPGA and have that emulated as well, um, which is um, yeah, far future, maybe, okay. if I feel like it. Uh, I'd like to thank a bunch of people. These are people who uh, worked on the commercial cartridge that I that I that I mentioned before. Uh, this is a guy who I initially cooperated with. He had the initial Vectrex um, uh, FPGA load. I later rewrote most of it, but still he helped out a lot. He also knows a bunch of stuff about uh, like uh, vector monitors that I didn't. Uh, and you guys for for being here and being so welcome. I mean, this is my first time here, and I, I you know. Uh, okay, thanks for listening. These are my credentials, etc. Yeah. I don't talk to anybody else.